Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's video, we're gonna be looking at the seven best dividend ETFs for June of 2023. So as you've noticed guys, dividend investing has been wildly popular, but how do you get it right? Accessing ETF funds is really a good way versus building a individual stock portfolio. So what is really the best way? Many investors fixed income strategies are out of the question because they are looking for a lot more growth. But today we are focusing on the dividend stocks as a preferred alternate method to investing. And also depending on where you are in life is really a very, very big thing where if you are younger generation dividend investing in dividend stocks might not be the best place to put your money because of the long-term growth aspect. But if you are getting ready to retirement, if you are in 50s, 60s, things of that nature, a lot of people will look at the dividend stocks to go ahead and grow and also provide income on a monthly basis. So the first one that we're looking at guys is the Fidelity High Dividend ETF, which is FDVV. Now, the big reason for this one, guys, the Fidelity, um, it aims to reflect the performance of large and mid-cap dividend-paying stocks. Um, about 90% of the holdings are U.S. stocks, which for a lot of individuals is very important. There's a lot of these that are um, international stocks that have very, very little holding within the United States. So 90% of the FDVV or the Fidelity High Dividend Yield is held within the United States. The remainder is in Japan, UK, Italy, Belgium, Netherlands, Denmark, and a couple other places. And it is somewhat top heavy with 30% of the funds invested in the top 10 holdings in the United States. Technology and financial services are large sectors accounting for 20% of technology, 16% when it comes to the assets respectively. Now, overall guys, the expense ratio on this one is a 0.29. Dividend yield is 3.76, which again is pretty decent, but I always put it in kind of the context of, you know, CDs and things of that nature are paying 5% right now. So a dividend yield of 3.76, even though the companies might be having a little bit of financial stress, which a lot of the American markets are. The average return since 2016 is 9.46%. That is right, guys. In almost the last decade, we have seen a 9.6% annual return on the Fidelity High Dividend ETF. Next one we look at is a fan favorite. I've probably seen more YouTube videos about this than anything. And it is the Schwab US Dividend Equity Fund ETF. It is the SCHD. That is right, guys. We could not do anything without this fund and really mentioning it. Big reason for this is the expense ratio is so low. The expense ratio on this is a 0 0.06, which again, looking at the Fidelity one, it was at a 0.29. Dividend yield on this one, just slightly lower at a 3.64. However, the 10 year average return. Now remember the Fidelity was seven years because that's all we did have. The average 10 year return was 11.67% on the Schwab US dividend equity ETF, putting it into sixth place. Now coming in at fifth is the Invesco High Yield Equity Dividend Achievers, or the PEY is the, the ticker symbol for it. So thing with this one, guys, high expense ratio. A 0.52 expense ratio on this one puts it probably almost to the top of the highest expense ratio. However, dividend yield on this one is 4.63. Now this is based on 50 US dividend stocks, high yield, and a history of increasing dividend payouts through the, the many, many years before. Now the 10 year average return on this one is 10.24. So again, dividend yield slightly higher than we had with the, um, the, the Charles Schwab investment at the 3.64, but the 10 year return a little bit lower at the 10.24 instead of the 11.67 that we've seen with the Schwab fund. Now looking at the FCF International um, Quality ETF, the TTAI, this is one, again, that is international, which again, a lot of people might have a hesitancy. One, it has a very high expense ratio of a 0.59. Dividend yield on this one is 10.50, but the five-year annualized return is 1.85. So the dividend yield, guys, is what people are really looking for in this one. 10.5% um, dividend yield, which again, is kind of crazy to think that the dividend yield is that high. Now, next one we look at is the Wisdom Tree Small Cap Dividend Fund. This one overall expense ratio quite a bit lower at a 0.38. Dividend yield coming in significantly lower at a 3.28, but it does have a pretty good average return of almost 7%, a 6.94% within the Wisdom Tree Fund. Then we get into the Invesco, guys. This is one that I've actually held for quite a bit. Invesco S&P 500 High Dividend 
Low volatility SPHD is the ticker symbol on this one, guys. Expense ratio, pretty low on this one, a 0 0.30. Dividend yield comes in at 4.31. And the 10-year average return is 8.13, which again is looking pretty good. Now, this follows the S&P 500, which most of you know is one of my absolute favorite funds to follow. Um, it selects 50 securities within a benchmark index. Many of them high dividend yield, very low volatility, which is the value orientation that the stock really focuses on. Due to the generous dividends, real estate is SBHD's largest sector, utilities, communications, and a couple other sectors as well. And then of course, guys, the top dog, the number one they put in here is the Vanguard International High Dividend Yield, the VYMI. Now expense ratio on this one, 0.22, so a little bit of a lower expense ratio but the dividend yield comes in very solid at a 4.47%. That is right, guys. This is the second highest dividend yield that we are seeing um, overall with the dividend yield. However, it does have a five-year annualized return of 3.58%. So overall, a pretty decent return when you look at the fund itself in comparison to the dividend yield and the dividend ratios that we do see in here. Now, guys, why dividend? Why do people choose these dividend um, dividend stocks? Big thing is, again, like we said before, it is the income that is generated from these dividends. A lot of people do rely on this supplemental income when it comes to, you know, again, savings accounts, CDs, dividend yields, things of that nature. Not only do they want a little bit of growth within the market and having invested in the market, but most of the dividends, again, can be returned and kind of a supplement to Social Security is the way that I see this. Again, there are a lot of dividend yields that people hold for an incredible amount of time. But if you're not reinvesting the dividend yield that you're getting from these and actually taking the dividends, living off them, the growth factor of this goes down a incredible amount because you're taking away the compounding interest that you'd see within here. Now, one thing to note on here, guys, they did take out anyone, um, any ETFs with an expense ratio higher than 0.67 and also screened out funds with any dividend yields below 2.67 to really come up again with the seven best dividend ETFs of June of 2023. This list could always change, which is funny because I put it in chat GPT, um, played around with it a little bit, seen exactly what it put out, which of the seven that we had in here, five of the seven were still when chat GPT was essentially cut off in 2021, I'm still seeing a lot of the dividends. So these funds have been going for a significant amount of time and have been going really strong. So all right guys, so that'll do it for today's video. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. And as always, thank you guys for watching.